Stuart Bloor and as always with a pike fishing video I like to talk about pike welfare and here are a couple of essential items if you're going to go pike fishing. Pike fishing isn't the sort of angling that you can just decide to have a go at. It is quite specialised, you need specialised tools and equipment. Here are a couple of things that you definitely need. First of all forceps. Although sometimes you can get the hooks out by hand, usually you'll need the forceps to go into uh, the pike's mouth to take them out safely as you can see there. These are from the Greys uh, Prowler range as well as the bolt cutters. Bolt cutters, they're like a good insurance policy really. You hope that you don't need them but you definitely have to have them there just in case. So if you're thinking of going pike fishing, a lot of research and homework you need to do first and here are a couple of essential items that you need to have in your kit. Forceps, bolt cutters. I'm now on the canal, as you can see from behind me, and I'm about to cast out my first bait. Traditional pike bung there. Brings back lots of memories. For those of us who can remember, the days of Mr. Crabtree. Let's get this bait out. This is a sardine that I'm putting out on the first cast. And that's the bait, just a small sardine. Keeping my eye on the float out there, I'm just about to cast out my second bait, which is a perch dead bait. There was a bung on the first float, as you, uh, as you saw, and there were um, float stops on there. Not float stops, rubbers. <laughs> rubbers on there to uh, keep it into place. Watch it, by the way, that's why I'm looking away. On this one, I'm fishing a, a slider float. And as you can see there, I've got a, a stop knot, a power gum stop knot. And one of the important things is when you're fishing for pike uh, with a float, like I do, because I like fishing with a, with a float, is, is that you need to keep the stop knot because you can adjust it. See, so it just slides up and down the line there and uh, you need to adjust it so that it's just up to the, uh, to the float because if you've got a foot over two feet, three feet, whatever it means when the pike picks the bait up starts to move with it that you've already lost that opportunity of, of striking early knowing what's happening so before you know it if you've got six foot of extra line before the stop knot you know the pike has, has took it down and it's, uh, and it's off so you need to keep it quite, uh, quite tight a few inches here and there particularly on a windy day doesn't matter because the float blows around and then takes up to the, uh, uh, to, to the stop knot but it's important to do that because it's better particularly you know speaking to novices now it's better to strike early and lose that fish than it is to wait too long and you hear a lot of nonsense about um, the moment you get your first uh, indication of a pike you know you can go and pour yourself a cup of tea and go for a walk and all this sort of stuff that's that's medieval nonsense in this day and age the day of enlightenment as it should be for pike we need to really be on the ball as far as uh, pike uh, welfare um, in a general sense is concerned particularly now as I'm talking about uh, making sure you know what's happening so you can hit that bite as soon as it's the uh, the right time if you're not sure as I say strike early lose fish as you get more confident and you develop your experience you'll know when to when to strike and you won't lose too many fish so I've got the floats out there as I say and you know repeating that uh, I've got my eyes on them just mixed up some uh, some predator ground bait mix and as you can, uh, you can see there it's uh, it's a nice colour a lot of uh, a lot of blood based stuff in there and if we had smell of vision well believe me you'd see what I'm talking about when I say that uh, this has got to give you the edge in, uh, in certain circumstances and I think particularly on somewhere like this the canal where there's lots of small fish um, I'm a great believer that a crowd attracts a crowd, that's a life principle anyway, not just fishing. But certainly putting this stuff out, because I've put some uh, dead maggots in as well, it'll, it'll draw fish in, all sorts of fish will come in. And of course, uh, any pied, pied, <laughs> feeding pike will, uh, will, will, will soon be onto the, uh, onto the case. But that's the plan anyway, and we need a plan, don't we? We need a theory. Sometimes it doesn't work, because that's angling for you. But at the end of the day, you still need a theory, you still need a plan, uh, a, a plan of attack when you come out on a water. So that's mine for today. It's quite windy now. I'm a little bit.
bit sheltered when on position and things, and that's not uh, too bad. The rain stopped as well, so that's that's good. But uh, it's certainly uh, certainly cold, and let me stress again, particularly with the uh, issues of pike fishing, that although I am looking at the camera from from time to time, I've always got the camera positioned in such a way that I can see the floats even if it's out the corner of my eye, so to speak. That's important. Can't over uh, stress that enough, over emphasize that enough, that uh, we need to be switched on to the, uh, to the floats if we fish in that particular uh, way of indication when pike fishing. Anyway, I've got this uh, uh, new suit on. Well, I've had it a couple of months now, which for me means I've certainly uh, fished with it a few times. And what I'll do in the article is I'll give her a review on this particular uh, product. I bought it myself so I can give uh, a fair a fair product uh, review can't I without any uh, bias. It's a windy day. The video is, uh, is now coming to an end. I've been here about an hour or so and I uh, haven't uh, had anything yet but of course if you follow my angling journal on a regular basis you'll know that the video section isn't about pictures of me playing fish or floats going under or anything like that if I do happen to catch something for the camera in the short time that I do the filming then that's great that's just a bonus but if you want to find out how I get on in the rest of this short session and also, of course, in the ones that follow it. Then, as always, you know what I'm gonna say, read the article. I produce uh, an angling journal each week. Every Saturday, my website is updated. And that consists of the video part, which you're watching now, which is just a short sort of tips bit, really, hoping to communicate uh, through this medium, the, uh, you know, the passion that I have for angling. And then, of course, the article, where you'll be able to look at the photographs of the fish that I will catch. So I'm confident that I'll catch something. If not this particular session, then on the ones that are to come. So check out my website. All the details will be on the screen shortly. P.S. Just as I stopped filming there, I had a take. I've got a fish. So I'll call one for the camera after all. Let me show you, it's in the net, ready to go back. So I'm not a camera blanker after all. And if you want to see that uh, fish posing with me, then of course, as I've already said, check out the article.